Good night, fellow punters. The clock on the wall is exactly twi uh, 10 bells on Monday night. Since I talked to you last, I had a nice surprise last night when Tony Kelly was announced as man of the match. Um, nice little few pound got. Um, I met Mickey Minton. He was a former Roscommon player. Um, he used to play centre right forward, even though he's only about five foot four, five foot five, maybe. Remember one of the greatest uh, battles I've seen as a youngster was him, Mark, and uh, Stephen Sweeney. They used to call him the harsh. He used to play centre right back for Mayo, and he brought him just up and down from the corner flag out to the 50, in and out, in and out, and Sweeney kept following him. Took him out of the game completely. But he asked me yesterday, he says, How do you think the hurling will go? And I said, It's a tough one to call. I said, This is what I genuinely what I said to him. I said, I hope Clare wins today because they won't win two in a row. But I said, Cork could win next year and the following year. So that's exactly what I said to him. So I backed Clare, but I didn't collect because the match was a draw, even though they won it. They didn't win it in uh, the regulation uh, 70 minutes. Um, and if it finished in a draw, here, you know, Tony Kelly mightn't have uh, uh, got man of the match. It might have been a Cork man uh, if it was going to a replay. So swings and roundabouts. Uh, I made a few pounds today. Um, got off to a great start and so did the week with It's All About You. And I felt like a right bollocks all day when I kept seeing that he was going out to six and six and a half on the exchanges. And I was saying, what, what am I, what's wrong like? Uh, that he wasn't fancied because after me saying last night I'd be very surprised sort of if he didn't win and if he didn't win today he'd find it hard to win he knuckled down well on the stretch and he won and I'd say he might progress again he won't he'd only got up a couple of pounds for that um, and even stepping up he can step up another uh, furlong or two or three um, and he could win again for us um, so it was all about him today uh, I went downhill after that, Master Richard. Uh, I thought he might take the lead in Beverly. Um, he didn't. So they're changing tactics. The will race come to him. Uh, we'll watch him maybe when money comes. Uh, if I don't put him up as a tip sometime, keep an eye on him. If money comes for him, he'll win a race because he's going to be well handicapped. And the ground, or ground and the trip that see me through did not stay the distance. I was, And the ground didn't help him, of course, either. It's gone... It's gone went, soft uh, officially uh, after the second race in Ballon Robe and how could Mio for Sam I was thinking last night how could Mio for Sam win a race and a scam man tipping him up Lord above he probably just said look at hey this ain't going to work um, ground against him as well though it rained a good bit it rained here a lot today too and it's raining tonight there and just as terrible I, I was talking to a lot of women today down around the laundromat and that and uh their discussion with the kids can't do anything and can, they can't go on holidays and they hadn't foreign holidays booked and um, not simple. Uh, Galway race is next Monday. I hope uh, next Monday evening isn't like this evening in Galway or it'll put a bit of a, a dampener on it. Will you be damp after it for sure? Um, that's the reason I didn't go to Bell and Rope when it was raining today because I'm away early in the morning and I was mowing the lawn. I got I had to mow it wet today, but it had to be done. Um, I didn't get it all done at the back. Um, anyway, tomorrow, it isn't hectic. How is, uh, how is the cows getting on in the banner? I didn't hear the hatch so they wouldn't be up yet um, from the rink last night. Um, I seen uh, Jerry... Wasn't too happy with me song last night. He's a langer. Um, he left another message in there that they're in the Wilton. I must drop in there sometime I'm in Cork. He said they had good roast beef, but the burning question is, do they have custard? Um, if no custard, no entry. Or else they'll better have the sherry trifle maybe with custard. Well, they need custard for that too. Anyway, on to tomorrow. It's not hectic. It's a sort of a dire straits day. I get out of the way. There's a stay in race tomorrow, 1 6 at Wolverhampton. Uh, I was looking at the prices there yesterday, the forecast prices. Liberated lad, Arthur done us a couple of good turns a couple of years ago. Um, well, we're going back probably 18 months. And he won last time out. But I seen the 7 to 2 about Finsberg. And I was saying that was the bet in that race. Um, 
liberated land and one through to his last three, Jack Gilligan. It's still only rated 60. But it won for us what? Just as a matter of curiosity. We were on him here, wasn't it, in Nottingham? No, it was before that. It was on the goo. Here we go. It was on Southern. 51 and 56. That was in January of 2023. God, that seems so long ago. Well, it is a long time ago. He's won twice, three times since. Um, Taken him on with Pinsburg. Uh, There's a four-year-old by protectionist. A lot of money for it in the last couple of hours. There's no seven to two now. It had several runs last year there at a mile and a half. You know, it's a third to plus seconds. Three, two thirds, two seconds. Uh, soft ground in uh, Thursk last September throughout that. Put it back on the goo then. It had two thirds and uh, it won in, uh, won on turf in uh, Lingfield. And it pulled away from the field. Went off five to two second favourite. Beggarman was the favourite. Subterra. Henry V is front. next and Arabescato is at the back end of the field and Finksburg is back in front here with two to run. Finksburg from Beggarman who came there alongside but is now two lengths behind and now Finksburg extends the lead, taxiing challenging for second place. Beggarman could do no more. It's taken a while here for Finksburg to get his act together but this is pretty impressive. He's made all of the running. Finksburg and Kieran Fallon eases down to win the first. Yeah, it only shows a length and a half. It could have been, could have been four. It could have been six. He won that off fifty-one. He was up five pound, and he was second in a good old, good enough old race there. That Red Force one is a decent sort. Uh, Bet Churchill as well would won a couple of races, so that was going to be the nap, and it has to because I can't find anything else. But it's, uh, I think it's going into eleven to eight now. Yeah, eleven day, but that might settle in the market on the morning again. Um, that'll be the nap tomorrow. We go to another staying contest in Musselburgh. The hot favourite is Aknamara. Aknamara. Uh, this one off sixty the last time after going down over two stone, didn't it? Go down from six from ninety, ninety one. Has two stone, three pounds. It left um, Harry Fry from uh, Winterfield Kirby. Um, but if we look at this, uh, it beat Lord Taranaga, uh, a length and a quarter. They were on level weights. Um, I pulled desperate hair through that race too. What are you at? Doesn't want to. No. Before between the navigate. How will it help me? That's it there. He's still pulling at about at the mile pole. Mile and a quarter. Farewell, the green and yellow colours. The green and yellow colours also there of Lord Toronaga. Lord was just being shunted back a little bit through the field. Still goes OK, the though. Blue Sugar hat. pie honey bunch still towards the rear. So too the navigator. Getting a little bit closer now. Rory the cat, who's trying to make progress right round the outside. So they're starting to make back through the field like a stone through That's water. His there. gift of Raj. Uh, Aknamar in third. Definitely green jacket. Then the green and yellow of Fon. Farewell, the sheepskin nose band. Also trying to get involved. Towards the final quarter of a mile, and it's Aknamara, the light blue colours, who's come through to pass Sam Sarfati, who's boxing on gamely. Then Lord Torinaga in third, Major Snugman is tired, the navigator staying on from the back of the field, but inside the final furlong, it's Aknamara, Lord Torinaga now looks to make danger. Aknamara, Lord Torinaga, as the race up towards the line, Aknamara sticks out its. So that's Lord Torinaga in second. And if you look at what's up against this horse tomorrow, there's a horse called Trojan Sun. Four-year-old, lightly raced. It's 
three runs there handbrake fully on 150 to 1 twice and 100 to 1 21 lengths 19 and a quarter and 16 lengths best got america 57 thrifted from i think that day from something like 12s out to uh, 22s um but lord taranaga was in the race as well here and this ran on very well from a a very bad position come around the turn for home and it was the first time at the trip and it stayed on well i'll have a quick peep at it that's him back here and hero was the one that came down as they go to the end of the back straight he's out of the race and with the lead, it is Knight's Affair and Seamaster with, on the outside, Suchuel Shams, Lord Taranaga. Being shaken up is Ivinator. Trojan Sunny still adrift at the back of the field as they come off the turn towards the final three and a half furlongs. And Seamaster's made just about all of the running. Suchuel Shams has been a pretty constant presence throughout this race so far. Lord Taranaga in third, the dark green and yellow. Knight's Affair here, looking no. to close in, but got very close there to Suchuel Shams and have to switch out. Further back is Trojan Sun. Ivy Nate is being eased off at the back of the field. And Seamaster is yet to be headed. He's inside the two. Knight's Affair, though, straightened out. Galvanised and coming with a run on the outside. And will just about take it up as they approach the furlong pole. Knight's Affair going on from Seamaster. Back in third is Lord Toranagra at one pace from Suchu El Shams. And then Trojan Sun, who is running on down the outside. Knight's Affair in front, though, as they come close home. And Knight's Affair is going on to win. He's off the mark. A beat Trojan Sun. Back in third place was the long-time leader, Seamaster, from Lord Toranaga. You bet that, Tor Lord, now I understand that there were two different races, two different tracks, two different surfaces. But that showed a bit of um, ability there when he learned uh, to change his leads there coming up the stretch and he, and he you know, he plucked on there, uh, chugged on nicely. So we're going to do him as a win bet. He's seven to two. He was four to one in places earlier. Uh, seven to two. Actamara is the five to two. And you could nearly, I think, uh, Seamaster is better at 1-6. Um, or without Act Namara, just we'll have a check. Because we might do the reverse forecast of this. He's 9-4 to four without the favourite. But uh, we'll get him on the bus. There's a win in that heart. Um, Linkfield is on tomorrow, but um, it's tricky. There was one sort of an interesting bit, but there's a hot favourite. I was looking at that um, Emerget. Um, but there's a real hot favourite in it, so he must be well handicapped. Uh, but this horse, the first time out that he ran, he went off 10 to 11. Favourite by um, Blue Point. But that caddy that he was just a head behind is rated, is rated 90 something now, isn't it? 95. Because that one next time out. Uh, by a length and a half in a novice uh, when that was run and that enchanted that won the race uh, is rated 77 um, and the second time it ran it got careered off the track uh, when it was that hurt by the man um, might be an each way bet for anyone that wants a small each play if they want Anton on the go tomorrow the nine to one shot there. It's a hot favourite, like so, uh, or maybe without the favourite. Uh, I I I just can't place that horse uh, off the bat. Candy. We might take candy from the bookies tomorrow. He must be well handicapped. That run in Sandown, I suppose. Uh, Ball and robe tomorrow evening. Over the over the hurls there's a race there uh, tomorrow it's the novice hurl uh, Val Surpresa it's the full brother to presenting Percy owned by Philip Rillens and it was bought for 50k um, it's one uh, it that was a good bumper on beside uh, behind extrapolation uh, then over hurls a couple of times at one and down Patrick 
on good ground. And the last day in Roscommon. Um, there he is with the white hat. Keep an eye on him. As they go to the second flight in the back straight, it's four from home. Stenity, over and clear. Slightly reduced advantage. Roxanne Girl landed second. Made a bit of a howler of a mistake there. He gets caught for room coming around the, the turn. Keep an eye on him on the inside. The, back, the white hat. The, the back straight. Senate coming back to the group now as they make the approach to the straight. Senate being closed out by Roxtown Girl, the Cockard D, Morning Soldier, nudge along the outside of Alistair Fraser making ground. Senate has dropped back to the rear of the field now as they approach the turn in. The Cockard D on the outside is the leader, improving between horses if you let me. Roxtown Girl, slightly tight for room on the inside, and the outside morning soldier behind him, Val Surprise. Three from home. The Cockardy over a couple of lengths in front, chased by, if you let me in second, and they've gone away from Val Surprise, a morning soldier. On now to the second last. The Cockardy to the left, challenging stand side, if you let me. They fight it out ahead of Val Surprise, back in third. Down to the final flight, on the far side. The narrow leader, Le Cockardy, near side, if you let me. They'll battle it out on the run in, far side. Le Cockardy leads, if you let me, on the stand side in second, but with less than 100 yards to race, Le Cockardy. He shot right when he had no chance, but he got tight for room on the turn. I don't know why he was riding him so tight to the rail for a younger horse. Uh, Gordon Elliott has won uh, the last two runnings of this, and like it's only a couple of weeks ago since the Scammon race. He won with it um, last year with Calico and Lieutenant Highway the year before that they didn't wait for Galway for this horse uh, with Philip Rillins. Albert just like, well, he hadn't as much luck as uh, Philip, but he used to always go to Galway with horses. Um, it's an each way bet if the eighth stay in it. It was five to one earlier, nine to two there now. Um, anyway, it's Monday night. What do we do on a Monday night? We're singing all the songs. We'll sing one for the dubs tonight as well. The dubs were a bit in down there for a while. After uh, uh, Steo didn't appear on the bus for a couple of weeks after Dublin got better. I had to fill a pint a few times at the bar for myself. No trace so. so I might do something for the cork books. The Langers, they're down today in the dubs. Ring a ring a rosy as the lights decline. I remember Dublin City in the rare old times. Raised on songs and stories, heroes of renown. The passing tales and glories that once was Dublin town. The hallowed halls and houses, the haunting children's rhymes that once was Dublin city in the rare old times. Ring a ring a rosy as the light declines. I remember Dublin City in the rare old times. My name it is Sean Dempsey, as Dublin as could be. Born hard and late in Pimlico, in a house that ceased to be. My trade I was a cooper, lost out to the redundancy. Like my house that fell to progress, my trade's a memory. And I courted Peggy Dignan. As pretty as you please, a rogue and child of Mary from the rebel liberties. I lost her to a student chap 
with skin as black as coal. When he took her off to Birmingham, she took away my soul. Ring a ring a rosy, as the light declines, I remember Dublin city in the rare old times. The years have made me bitter, the gargle dims me brain, cause Dublin keeps on changing, and nothing seems the same. The pillar and the met have gone, the royal long since pulled down, as a grey unyielding concrete makes a city of my town. Ring a ring a rosy, as the light declines, I remember Dublin city in the rare old times. Fare thee well, sweet Anna Liffey, I can no longer stay, and watch the new glass cages that spring along the quay. My mind's too full of memories, too old to hear new chimes, I'm a part of what was Dublin in the rare old times. Ring a ring a rosy, as the light declines, I remember Dublin city in the rare old times. Oh, the sweat is rolling off me. That's for the dubs. Here's for the langers, to cheer up the poor old langers. <coughs> Here's to them all, says the boys of Fair Hill. The smell on Patrick's bridge is wicked, how does Father Matthew stick it? Here's up them all, says the boys of Fair Hill. The blarney hens don't laze at all, and when they laze, they laze them small. Here's up them all, says the boys of Fair Hill. The Blackpool girls are very rude, they go swimming in the nude. <whistles> Here's up them all, says the boys of Fair Hill. Blackpool boys are very nice, I have tried them once or twice. Here's up them all, says the boys of Fair Hill. If you come to Cork, you'll get Trishine, Murphy Stout and Pig's Crabines. Here's up them all, says the boys of Fair Hill. Well, Christy Ring, he hooked a ball. We hooked him up, balls and all. Here's to them all, says the boys of Fair Hill. The smell on Patrick's bridge is wicked, how does Father Matthew stick it? Here's up them all, says the boys of Fair Hill. Here's up the boil, says the boys of Fair Hill. Bash the bookies over and out. <laughs>